live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jason Bowman. I'm joined by my man at the controls of the mothership here, Mr. Steve Alejandro. Hello. Steve, say what's up to the people. Hello, everybody. And uh, tonight we got something really cool for you guys. We've got Florian Venom Kohler, who burst on the scene back in 2010 with uh, what back then was a made for resale DVD called Venom One. Of course, that vi that video was quickly pirated and found its way online and quickly became a big internet sensation. And since then, Florian, again, he goes by the nickname Venom, has gone on to make hundreds of online videos. And tonight he's here to join us uh, to give us really the inside story on some of his biggest video hits. But before I introduce Florian, I do want to take a second and give a shout out to all of our uh, our healthcare professionals, our nurses and doctors, our first responders, grocery workers, truck drivers, uh, restaurant personnel, delivery drivers, all the people that are pitching in right now, uh, you know, to keep this country running and, and putting their lives on the line to do it. So uh, shout out to all those folks. Appreciate um, you. And if any of them are tuning in, we, we certainly appreciate you. We hope you stay safe and uh, and we hope you stay well. And thank you for everything that you're doing right now to, to really keep us moving. I don't know where we'd be without those people. So again, thank you to you. And uh, so with that, let me introduce the, the man himself. Florian, what's up, buddy? I'm doing all right. How are you guys? We're doing great, my man. How's uh, So tell us, tell, tell the audience, one, where you are, how you are, what life looks like on uh, uh, in the social distancing era. Well, I'm uh, in Las Vegas, so in my home right now. Uh, I'm pretty much stuck doing trick shot videos, which I've seen worse. Uh, the only issue is we cannot run the league, so that kind of sucks. But uh, other than that, we hang in there and uh, you know, just try to keep up, uh, come up with some insane shots daily. So that's my life now. <laughs> yeah, so Florian, of course, runs our APA league there in Las Vegas. So I got to ask you before we jump into this, I mean, have you been down to the strip? Like, what's that scene look like? I've seen some video and some pictures, and it looks almost like post-apocalyptic is the, is the way I could describe it. What, have you been down there at all? Yeah, it's entirely right. This is a, like a really weird feeling. It's a weird vibe. It's very, uh, I'll say, eerie. Like, uh, I think we went there a couple of days ago to just literally walk the dog out there, like walking the dog on this trip, right? I mean, think about how crazy that is. And there's just nobody. It's just empty. The only you can see is a few police officers by each casino basically guarding the entrance. Up a people and that's pretty much it i mean there's just nothing going on and i've never seen anything like it it's uh it's a site that you never think you're going to see because even at four or five in the morning in vegas there's something going on and uh yeah right there it's just nothing a few cars here and there and but yeah it, it's just weird there's there's no word for it really it, it seems like a I said the closest i could describe is like a bad horror movie pretty much you know yeah so uh, you and the family, though, are, are well, I assume. Ayana is doing well, Venomet, and uh, and your daughter, Chrissy. Everybody's healthy and, and just doing their thing, staying inside, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know about how the wife is doing too good because I've been trying to do so many more stupid shots, so I don't know how this is going to end up for me. But, uh, you know, I don't know if you follow a little bit. Uh, last week was toilet paper trick shot. Uh, this week was uh, trying to not to break a beer bottle, uh, you know, from the inside to the outside. So I'm pretty sure something bad is going to happen to me, but... We don't know yet. <laughs> well, don't make it, things any worse on yourself, Florian. You, you, this this may go on for a few more weeks, so don't make anything worse on yourself than you have to. That's what I'm worried about. You know, we still got a month to go. This seems uh, <laughs> dangerous here, but hopefully my walls are going to stay here too because I'm kind of in my pool room right now. I'm looking at the walls of Ron, and I see holes pretty much everywhere, so <laughs> it's not looking too good. So let's transition from, from the what's going on right now and, and revisit kind of some of the – some of your bigger video hits, if you will. And before we jump into the sure. first one, um, I just want to talk about kind of how you got started with the trick shots in general. If you could just briefly, you know, kind of tell the story of of, of where Florian Kohler picks up a cue stick and, and runs with the things that he's doing today. Well, actually, I didn't start very young to play pool. I started when I was uh, 18 years old. And uh, so I, I was, I remember in the car, I heard an ad on the radio. I was still living in France back then. Somebody's selling a small pool table for like it was 500 euro, something like that. And I was like, man, really, you know, I really want that. So I bugged my parents to just put one in the attic up there. And uh, so we went to pick it up. It was, uh, you know, cheap or whatever. It works. So then, I'm, you know, I'm here. I got this pool table and uh, I got no clue how to play. So what you do when you got no clue how to play is you basically just sort of, you know, go online, look at videos on the Internet and YouTube. Uh, 
trick shots. I was like, oh, maybe I'll learn pool this way. And uh, after a while, I basically did all the trick shots that already existed the last 60 years and uh, decided it was a little boring. So I created my own version. And from there, it just, just you know, went up and skyrocketed. It's just the funny thing, though, is I never really quite learned pool with just the trick shot. I had to learn <laughs> pool afterward, you know. But, like, it, 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 you know, it was really interesting. I, I Two years, maybe, and I knew... I knew all the trick shots that they've been doing the last 60 years. So that's just really what got me into it. I was like, man, I got to do something new, something more fresh. And Yeah. And, and how, is your, how is your actual pool game now? Because I know you take a lot of heat from people that are like, yeah, he could do those crazy trick shots, but he can't run out of table. Da, da, da. How's your actual <laughs> yeah, it's game? Still, it's, it's still kind of funny at this point, you know, but uh, to be honest with you, actually, currently my pool game is probably the best it's ever been because, you know, being stuck in quarantine <laughs> – Play like two or three hours daily in normal pool. And that's what I call normal pool is, you know, it's fun. And uh, no, I run out pretty good. I, I posted a video recently too about uh, the ghost, you're beating the ghost, meaning mm -hmm. uh, you play by yourself and you try to uh, just run out every table. And the way I do it, I end after break. But if I don't make a ball on the break, the ghost get a point too. So every miss, the ghost uh, get a point. So usually when you can beat the ghost, you know, you're pretty high skill level. But, you know, it's, uh, yeah. I have fun, you know, playing as my league players too. So do the challenge matches. I usually play myself as a nine, and it's always kind of a fair race. So, so you're playing at a seven nine level, nine eight ball. ball nine ball kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I should be. Yeah, yeah. I'm not <laughs> technically league either. So, <laughs> good to know. So, I, I, let's talk about this first video that we're gonna watch, Florian. So, you know, you get the pool table, you start watching trick shot videos, you start making your own uh, kind of smaller scale videos. Tell us how this Venom One, which is really what kind of kickstarted, you know, or jump started this this thing that you're doing now. How did this come about? Like, wh where did this begin? Well, I, what, what happened is so from from this uh, those videos, you know, that we put that I posted online, then uh, they just kind of got more elaborate a little bit, you know, and it just you know was almost like a weekly to biweekly things that I posted. And then some uh, some guy from Canada, a producer of uh, of pool videos, and his name's Nathan, uh, kind of you know looked at it and was like, "Man, we we should be able to do something." You know, nobody has released a cool trick shot video in a while, and uh, this might be the the way to make it more modern. So uh, here I am, you know, only after playing a few years of pool, flying to Canada, I tried to record that uh, the DVD, and uh, so we did really. Nice studio and everything, put a bunch of money in there. And the idea was to uh, yeah, literally just try to sell those DVD and make money from it. So before and, you tell us too much about the yeah. about this particular video, let's take a look at it real quick, Steve. And then sure. Florian can kind of tell us logistically how this thing actually came together. Because I know there's a pretty good story there. And I want to point out, this is the trailer for the DVD. This is not the DVD itself. So this is what you guys used afterwards. But I'm going to hit play. Now, you guys may not be able to hear it, but they can hear it at home. Okay, cool. Yeah, we want to keep the video flowing to keep the viewers up. Florian, actually, I think we're having a small technical issue, and the audio from the video is not coming through. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what's going on? Yeah, I mean, basically, this is all uh, epic music. So the idea was to make it look like a Hollywood trailer, you know. So you have back then when it was the, the beginning of the Internet, the, not the beginning of the Internet, but the beginning of the social media, the way we're seeing it, you had to really be efficient because connections were still slower. You didn't have, you know, like huge, huge uh, networks and stuff. So we, we just had maybe two, three minutes to make it as epic as possible. So we used uh, epic music and a bunch of shot really quickly. Trying to make it as fast as possible, as fast paced and as much action paced as you know as it could be, because well, you know, pools though the issue with pools, it's always been a little slow. And it's great when you're a pool player, but as a non-player, it's always a little bit difficult because it's not necessarily that entertaining. So the, our idea was always to go into the action side of it and make it really entertaining for somebody who's never touched a cue and from right. you know, to basically grab the people and, and make them and make them want to play pool. So, so where was this thing created, Florian? Where was this video shot? I mean, it looks like a really elaborate kind of place, the dark setting. Is this a, is this a studio of some kind? Where is this produced? Yeah, unfortunately, you know, we didn't have that kind of money to afford a studio. So 
Uh, I think he was in the middle of nowhere in Quebec. When I say middle of nowhere, <laughs> wow, a restroom. Okay, so it was uh, it was probably about an hour from like a, a big size, decent size city in the middle of cornfield. So it was a it was a warehouse, and they used to store uh, hay and stuff like that. You know, I don't know. So it was a big, big warehouse, and we built a set that's basically uh, four. Uh, well, actually, it's not four. It's three three wood panels. You know, to get it like a, almost a square. And then once that's this camera, uh, we put carpet on the floor, like a basic gray carpet, I think it was. And then the rest is, uh, I'm not even sure what's on the wall. I think it might be either another kind of carpet or some sort of cheap, you know, fabric, whatever, so just to make it dark. Wow. But it looks really cool, but uh, it wasn't. And then the next issue was we had a massive sound issue because the weather was pretty nasty. And on those big warehouse with, you know, I don't know what it is, aluminum roof or whatever it is. You could hear all the, the rain just coming coming through and it was just wind and everything. So all the audio had to be reworked. At least it wasn't my job, so I was okay. But, you know, I, it was an absolute pain in the butt, I think, to edit. And so what was, like, the budget for this? What did this cost to produce? Do you have any any ballpark? Um, I mean, each video, like those, they probably cost in between ten to $15,000 or something like that. And that's, that's honestly a really low budget for how much work has to be put on. I mean, yeah. the editing and the hours setting it up and just you know think about the flights and and the hotels and all those things the food it's just yeah it's up so quickly and i don't have to teach you guys how it is the crazy thing is i watched as i watched this florian like this doesn't even look like you anymore i'm like who is (laughs) that guy like how different how different does he look look at this uh yeah that's about uh, 10 years old something so you know that's crazy, crazy. So for me, the first time I saw this video, obviously I saw it on uh, on Facebook or, you know, I think it was probably Facebook. It wouldn't have been MySpace back then. But I see this video, I, and I had no idea who Florian was, but I instantly was like, well, number one, I was like, is this real? Like, are these shots <laughs> legitimately real? Because I couldn't get my mind around that, that they would be. And, and I thought, well, surely they're real. And then, and then my next thought is, Man, how do we get a hold of this guy? I want to work with this guy, but we didn't have a way to find you. You were in France, and, and so that was my that's my first memory of this video is just being wowed, right. realizing it was unlike anything I'd ever seen. And you know, at that point, I'd been at APA for you know ten years or something, uh, so I certainly wasn't new to the pool world. But I, it, this was to me, this was very groundbreaking. Yeah, I remember reading the comments on this one all the time. People were like. It was it magnets? Did, did, how did you do it? Was there a string in the ceiling? And just just everyone was trying to figure it out. And I think it was this shot here. Like, how long yeah. does it take you to do something like that? I mean, you don't have to. I mean, it's still, it still is to this day. I mean, every day I wake up, somebody either insult me or call it fake. Like that something. one there, like what? It's like it's just one of real. those. It's just, but at first, you really pissed me off. But now, you know, I take it as it's the, it's the biggest compliment I can ever have. So that means it's, it's that good that people cannot believe it. I mean, you know, how good it had to be. So, but not the idea in this one was to really, like you say, make it groundbreaking. So everything had to be different. And even if it was an old shot, it had to be a different flair to it, a different style to make it more more modern. You know, I'm thinking about the way that they used to do the first few skateboarding videos, you know, and then 10 years later, those videos right. were insane, you know. And same for the, the BMX and motocross. You know, one guy decided one day to do a backflip and people were like, oh my God. And then, you know, Five days later, they're doing triple backflips, you know, and it was sort of the same thing. And it was just, uh, yeah, the idea is to really make it completely new and completely different from everybody's scene. Plus, on top of that, clean quality, you know, very nice quality because it was also the the first beginning of, I'll say, cheaper camera, affordable camera that, you know, wasn't like you required a big TV camera that cost you $100,000. So, right. Slow mo cameras, all that stuff adds up real, real fast. You guys ready to go to the next video? Well, hold on. I'm curious. I want to. I want to talk real quick though about. So th- this thing was produced to be sold as a DVD, right? So how correct, long? Yeah. How long before this thing shows up and is being circulated on the internet for free? And <laughs> and how pissed were you when that happened? And how long yeah, did it take it. before you realized um, what had happened was it maybe even better for your career than had this thing been sold as a DVD? Tell it just. Kind of tell it, that took story. Me, it took me a while actually to get. Uh, how to say that? To to make peace with it, right? So. We intend to produce this thing. I'm not making any money out of it, really. And the producer's not making any money out of it. He actually lost money, right? So we sold this DVD and we're like, oh, we're going to sell plenty of them. You know, we don't need to sell them any to make money. We just, you know, need to break even so we can do better the next one. Right. So we released it. And a week later, I saw it on the Chinese YouTube, which is called UQ, right? 
Yeah. And a week later, I saw it is at 100 million views. And I'm like, what is this joke? Like, how is it even possible, right? That's so here I am, feeling. calculating my mind. I'm like, okay, 100 million views by $20 DVD. You know, imagine how much money we actually lost there. But in this, so it was really, you know, it was really like hard. Yeah. You know, sweat and effort and you get nothing, no money, right? Yeah. But at the same time later, I realized this is pretty much what launched me because that's exactly, you know, what you needed back then. It was just a viral effect. And that just gave me so much power to approach sponsor to, you know, for example, work with APA and all those things that would have never happened if it was just a, a small DVD, which would have made a little money out of it. And since then, I've never really cared about my content being taken out of context anymore. It's just as long as it's getting me views, you know, I'm okay with it. And I think, you know, any advertisement is great advertisement. It took me a little while to, you know, make peace with it, but now it's definitely no problem. <laughs> that's a, that's a definitely a cool story. And I could see how your perspective certainly would have changed over the years. So Steve, what do we got next? We got the, the, the uh, Venom uh, Unleashed. Unleashed in Vegas, I believe. Mm, I remember that one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So let me, I did fix the audio here. Let me get it balanced. So this is one of my favorites right here. Yeah, this we'll is tell you we why here in just a minute. Nope, yeah. then I won't spoil it. I don't I mind no spoil more. things. I got to not talk. I'm going to get in trouble. All right. I'm going to play it. Ready? Three, two, one. Melissa R. And Melissa so we got sound, R. right? We yeah, got they, sound. They're not hearing us. No, they can hear us too. Oh. Well, that's so hello, Melissa everybody. R, bro. <laughs> that's Melissa R. Nice, Jason. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> They won't be able to hear us as well. At least I certainly look so happy. <laughs> I'm always happy when I do those things, you know, it's a weird, weird thing I have. <laughs> I mean, one of my favorite things about this video, one, obviously it's one that we collaborated on and did together, but the fact that it, we did it in a casino, which, if, you know, most of you guys don't know about production, but shooting in a live casino is a huge thing. Huge, huge thing. <laughs> to get the approvals get. and to deal yeah. with the, the filming releases. But we were able to shoot this back at the old uh, Riviera, which is obviously no longer standing. Another reason I love this video, because all the footage in the rib. Yeah, this is awesome. But, uh... But to, to speak about what you're saying, there were times when I was some the production guy, right? I, uh, I would be walking to the casino having to hold my camera straight down and if it so much as went above a certain degree angle, I'm thinking my security's gonna jump out as you like you walk by the cage and they keep all the money and they, they, they're, they're paying attention. It's, it's really different. Anything like that. Well, and you remember we had that, uh, that person watching 24 hours too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that was, that was your first real collaboration with APA when we first started working together and of course, the lovely Melissa R. Melissa R. Who, who I don't know, Florian. I mean, look, I know the most beautiful. Uh, so you've used a lot of ladies in your videos. The most beautiful of which I know you will tell me is Venomette, your wife. Obviously. So no let's question. just let's just scoot her off the table because she's already okay, one. She, she's number one. Who is number two uh, in terms of the ladies you've worked with, and and is Melissa R. Number two because. In my and, personal and why opinion, is it Melissa R? <laughs> as, as the guy who actually booked Melissa R and went through a book of, of ladies, and, and my wife's probably watching too, and then there's nobody more beautiful than her to me, but, you know, Obviously. this one's certainly up there with the ladies you've used, is she not? Yeah, I mean, hey, you might be a little biased because it was your pick, yes. right? But, uh, no, I mean, I got to say, though, it's, it's, it's kind of a weird thing, too, because some people, you know, really look great in person and this, but on the camera, they don't look oh, as yeah. much. And then some people, they're comfortable behind the camera and, and actually doing that because believe it or not, it's not easy to lay on the table all day. And it feels like being laying on a, on a rock, right? As far as I know. And it's not easy to keep smiling and to keep having the, the right attitude. And like this, yeah, she took it like a champ, honestly, she because this, uh, I, this was not a fun day. I mean, well, it was, fun, but like, it was long and painful. And, uh, you know, that that's what we call the true professional. And that's something that it's hard to find, to be honest with you. And, yeah. Uh, it's easier said than done. You know, a lot of people are great. You know, they look great, but to actually do it for a job, it, it's actually a real skill. Trust me. Oh, yeah. So, and I've worked with a few, and we've had you know high and lows, and uh, yeah, this was a pretty good high. She I'll be honest. Good. When we called the agency, it was probably one of the most bizarre conversations I've ever had 
hiring <laughs> talent for anything I've ever done. I'm a, I'm a photographer, I'm a videographer, you know, commercial for APA, you know, and I had to tell the, 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 the agent, Hey, look, I need a model who's going to lay on a hard surface for eight to 12 hours with very little breaks because the production <laughs> schedule was tight and we're going to be shooting pool balls, not necessarily at her. <laughs> Oh like, yeah, we well, are. Yeah. Not yeah, basically shooting people in her face. Yeah, right. Yeah. We're not <laughs> intending to hurt her, and then of course, you know, and then of course it was some what? And there was, you know, after the explanation. But this is who we ended up with, Melissa R. She is shockingly enough, I want to say she was pushing. She was either just turned forty or was about to turn forty. She was a yoga fitness instructor for her like day job. Yeah, did so, she have like four kids or something like that too? I she, mean, she had a couple amazing. of kids. Yep. And but you're right, Flory, and I mean the the fact that she was such a trooper because this was probably what what did we shoot like eight hour? This was like well, an eight I mean, hour. One shoot. of the biggest issues we couldn't shoot whatever we wanted, right? We didn't have right. the schedule we would have loved because we had to go during uh, I think it was low hours, right? Like, right. Well, it's world. It was the World Pole Championship, right? So we. That's right. In the in the there was a, there's a second one of these, and I don't remember if there's footage from the second half of the shoot in this video, but. There, we had to go shoot in the main tournament room. Well, there's tournament play in there from like seven in the morning to like four, like eleven p.m. Yep. in the main room, or in the end at like no, two in the yeah, morning. yeah, two or four, two, three, four in the morning, yeah. So we obviously can't have this dude in there slamming the table with his, <laughs> you it know, with, him right, right? Yeah. right while <laughs> tournament play is going on. So we actually had to kind of like physically prepare ourselves, and we actually did a shoot for from like 11 p.m. overnight till 8 a.m. And she was part of it. Yeah. And it, yep. uh, my favorite quote from Florian Kohler during any shoot I've ever done with him is at about three in the morning, he gets a little weird. And he says, <laughs> vampire mode activate. And he starts. It was still work for everything. And we, <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get through the shoot at four in the morning, apparently. So, it's actually, believe it or not, that's why I shoot my best is to it. Like after midnight, it starts to get there, right? Right. One. Yes, I'm hallucinating and seeing unicorns yeah. and fluffy rainbows, and he's he's just having a great time. <laughs> you know, and this is I this is your pool table, out of player, you know. <laughs> Wasn't this your pool table that you brought, Florian? Wasn't this the pool table? Out yeah, of it was actually. Here? That was the fun thing too. We had to move this table from my house to the west uh, to the Riva, actually to the Riviera, right? So we had to move this thing physically and then set it up, then shoot there, and then set it back out, put it back in my house. Yeah, it was a pain in the butt. <laughs> and it was how many times? How many times have you done that with your own table? Have you hauled your oh, own I, table I, out to a shoot? I'm counting. I got one in the garage and PCs just for that now. So, oh, wow. Uh, Smart. This one probably we did, we did a time lapse of breaking down your table, I think, somewhere, didn't we? Oh, yeah. And this table, this very table went to, I think it went to this 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 thing here. So it went in the Riv. Then it went to, and it went to the Riv in two different spots, remember? It went in the main room as well a little bit. Yep. Then it went, uh, I think it went to the Mayweather Boxing Club. We did a video there. It went in the helicopter pad. At the, at the airport, and then he went into the desert uh, around dune buggies, and I think after that it was pretty much uh, done. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened to the table? Is it just you just dispose of it? I was able to sell it. Uh, oh, somebody sold it. Okay. Like if it was pretty cheap yeah, that's cool. for a nice scooter, but it still played good. I mean, the slate was intact, so it's only yeah. my. And then we had a new version of it. So it's a pretty table. You've been working with your sponsor Rassen for a long time, haven't you? You know, I, I've always been working with the same people because the pool industry is a small industry and you know, you got to, you can't just go all around, you know, you, when you trust people and when people trust you back, you, it's the best way to do good things. And, uh, I've always had a great relationship because then, you know, we're all able to work in, you know, in, in harmony and, and work well and, you know, do bigger thing, you know, because if you just switch constantly from one sponsor to another, then, it's very hard to build something big and those projects, you know, they're, like I said, they're costly, they're, but they're great and they, you know, they're, uh, they're like highlights of my life. You know, this one is, is one of those I'll remember forever. And I guess you guys probably the same. I mean, this was something else. Yeah. Not many people are able to shoot in a casino, you know, like this. So, and it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty special. The, the other interesting thing that I remember about this guys is we were actually in the middle of doing, we had a production company that had come in and was shooting a, tv pilot at the same time this was actually a portion of that tv pilot uh, true, the pilot yeah. was called behind the eight ball it, it never it was never picked up we actually own the rights to the to the pilot which we have maybe someday we'll we'll air that steve and see what the world thinks. <laughs> yeah. but uh, it might be time to put it right now let's put stuff back and work more you know? yeah. yeah well i've got the footage still sitting at the office yeah so that's what i remember and then uh 
Didn't we have an issue, Steve? I'm not going to ask Florian this. Didn't we have an issue with Melissa R? Like, we had to get her some type of other, uh, like, something okay. else to wear or something. Tell so, me the story. So, all right. So, here's the deal. <laughs> Obviously, Melissa R, and she's a very nice, very respectful, like, this is no knock against her. I should have been a better director, and I should have worked better with the agency to inform them. But Melissa's in a very short dress, and as you can see, this is an open set. Like, there's people just walking by. So I don't know if the agency kind of informed her that maybe she shouldn't wear, like, the underwear that you would normally wear with a dress like that. That's guess how I'll say that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's about as PC as I can get. And so because we had a, we had a, a peanut gallery, we obviously wanted to show Melissa respect. So, But we're in the middle of a Vegas casino, like, and we need, like, board shorts or I guess they're called – I'm that guy. I don't know what these things are called, but – you know, a couple of our teammates went and grabbed grab some, and then because uh, it, it actually halted shooting, like we couldn't. Well, shoot I mean, some people have fun, problem. though. The, the people that you see standing on the other side, right? They they were standing there, they were camping. They they had a good time for a little while out there. Yeah, so, she, know, she was a true professional, though. I, you, somebody yeah, you guys she, mentioned that, and she yeah. was, you know, I mean, just the hours, and and you said like she does get hit by the ball, oh, yeah. like several oh, times. God, yeah. You know, but maybe hey, not I, in the I, face, you know, but in the arm, in the legs. It, it leaves a few bruises, you know, but I'm, I'm sure most of the people that are watching here, if you've seen the show, I probably have missed one or two shots and I probably hit one of you guys. So, you know, well, I remember, actually, uh, there's, there's a shot here where you did almost hit me more, not me, but the lens hit you. Oh. It was right here. This shot right here. Oh yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. So yeah, we would, we filmed it in the beginning from the other side because we usually do two sides to every shot and I don't know if you had top spin or what. It just it rolled on the front there instead of coming back, and it almost rolled into like a ten thousand dollar camera. <laughs> Our like for real. Our production assistant Derek Bell. If you're out there listening, I love your face for this. He literally. Whoom, I remember that. Yeah. Like boom, I could go back and find it. It's not in this obviously, but had he not like ninjaed the the cue ball, <laughs> it would have been it would have been bad news bears. I mean, we had backups, but that's not that's not what you want to go tell your boss. Hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. That's, that's, and that's the first time I've heard that story. So yeah, that's did I not tell you that? <laughs> I don't I think did. so. The first time I heard that story. Maybe I should oh, don't it's, tell yeah. you things that maybe worked out, so maybe you don't have to worry. <laughs> it's always all right to tell it after it works out, right? It's a good story then. It did work out. Maybe that's why we did. I'm sure I've told you at some point or another. Uh, look at the Riviera, too, in all her glory. Yeah. All right, so what do we got next? What's the next video we got that we're going to take a look at? You know what? Florian's Arsenal. I don't remember. Well, you play it and we'll talk Let's about it. it. Oh. Let me turn up the audio a bit here for the video. That is one of my personal favorites that never got viral, actually. Sadly. Oh, so this, this is also from our event, right? Yep. It is, yeah. Okay, here we go. This is at the Westgate. Yep. There's yep. Ayana. Yep. There we go, yeah. This was actually something you and I had talked about for a long time that I ended up not mm -hmm. being able to be on set for this one. Which broke my heart because this, was, this just looks so very cool. Yeah, we always okay. kind of talked about this because of the sheer number of tables in the room, how cool it would be to do something. And, you know, Florian just kind of spearheaded it and took this into, you know, it did it himself. Yeah. Well, actually, we uh, we had some help from uh, Pool Dog, which is, you know, it's been a part of the APA for a while now. Oh, yeah, we love Pool Dog. Yep. As you know, secure the team and uh, and the, the camera crew as usual to make it happen. So the the, the hardest part in this was once again it was shot in a very little, very few hours, right? I mean, and, after the tournament is done and before it's starting again. So what is it? What you said, like uh, eight hours tops or something like that? I yeah, I think I think there's one night during the ten day tournament where we had a window of that we could get you in here. There was only one night, and so Bill Tufts and. Uh, you know the tournament team. I, I know Tim Dyer was involved because he was on the night shift. Really made this happen along with our, our table vendors from High Country. So it takes a lot of work to try to fit something like this in, but uh, they made it happen that night. And then obviously Florian was able to do his magic. Yeah, I honestly, it's, I, it's probably one of my best uh, as far as skill oh. goes because to pull all this, <laughs> never repeated, right? Never repeated because I've never tried this before. So I had to come up on the spot with the shots, make them in almost no time to make, you know, a three minutes video or whatever, and not waste anybody's time because if you do miss, you only have one shot at it, that's, that's it, you know. Other times, you might be able to get back at it or take an extra day or extra hours. This one, you, you just, you know, you had to do it and it was clutch. It was 
right there, you had it, and uh, it ended up working perfectly. It just didn't go viral for some reason. I don't know. Uh, I don't, but, you know, so hopefully we can do another one. <laughs> I love that one. I'm sure we could. I, you bring up a good point about how difficult these things are really to shoot, because you always tell me for like a three minute video, you want about 30 shots to pull from. And just well, and the thing is, the time I, it takes to do that is pretty intense. I'm able to practice most of them, right? Because it's one table. It's not a big deal. I can practice at home. But for those, there's no practice beforehand. It's just right, right. on the spot. Right. So you got to think, right. we had one cart, and we had to move those tables to put them in the right spot, right? Because nobody was helping us. It was just, uh, just the, the crew. two people and I. So we're moving this table, put them on the side, put them on the carts, move it. You now put it down. And then it's like, oh, it's too far. Move it back on the car. Back up. I mean, this right. just hour. So, yeah, it's amazing we're able to make a full video out of just so little time. So I'm still uh, so cool, man. Gonna bust you guys' balls until I can get a better version of this one of those days. So, <laughs> okay, very cool. And how does so like Ayana was in this video? How often yeah. do you guys do you guys is she part of your productions? Uh, I mean, I know some of the stuff you shoot at home. She gets involved. She's done some of her own videos, but. How often is she a part of the production? Uh, quite, quite often. If it's not just on the table, it's as far as like a you know PA basically helping out and stuff like that. I mean, it just takes a small army to really make this happen. So it's you know it's really invaluable help. And if it's just even just go to go get the balls, you know, I mean, it's like literally you got to go run around the, the table, try to find the cue balls, bring it back, and all those things. So any help is always great. And yeah, she uh, does a little bit of everything. But the one thing is. To be honest with you, uh, you know, some of the videos, people are kind of ruthless on the comments, I'll say. And it's one thing when it's somebody that you just hired, but it's another thing when it's your own family. Your wife. Yeah. yeah. If, it, if it's, you know, if it's really, really small or I know it's pretty, pretty good, we won't have much trouble, then I'm more than happy to uh, get involved. But if it starts to get a little too much and, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I just say I'll rather it's some, it's just a model that's pay for it and it doesn't really impact us you know what i mean so right yeah. it's not personal yeah i get it man that's got to be tough but uh you know come on look at ayana she's a beautiful lady yeah. how can they give her a hard time that's ridiculous and it saves you a ton of money i mean it's not inexpensive to hire because you need this model for days and it, i mean it's it's thousands sometimes to to get to lock a person down especially yep. a person who's well, good at what they do yeah i mean people they don't realize they always talk man, let's just say you know badly that it takes a while to make a shot this and there but what they don't realize is it takes a long time to set the cameras move the cameras then oh, if yeah. the camera do his job right you got to do it again and if the model didn't look you got to do it again i mean it's a it's a lot of things to coordinate that are really tricky and uh the sure some shots back, might take a while but i mean on back, sorry to, pick, crazy, to, to piggyback on what you're saying i'm sorry to cut you i apologize the uh no worries, He's so right, though. Like, he could nail a shot, but if I miss it, he has to do it again. Yeah. yeah. And that happens. I mean, this stuff happens so fast that sometimes you don't know how things are going to react. You you try to anticipate it the best you can. I do remember the, in that the last video, once you were practicing a shot, and I was setting up, and you, like, nailed it the first time, and I wasn't recording, and you were like, <laughs> Gah! <laughs> Yeah, and, and then, then you got to do it, it 20 times later, times, and then you know. And yeah. it did. And you, about, about shot 15, I thought you were going to rip my head off. <laughs> but, but we got it done. I think I remember which one it is, too. It's the one where it goes, wah, wah, and then it's all in the corner pocket. I'm sure that was super technical explanation. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the next video we got? We have. Oh, this is oh, a good one. Oh, yeah. Whoa, all right. Perfect. Good video I've ever had. I gotta grab. I gotta grab a beer real quick while we watch this. one. hold on, I'll be right back. What's up, guys? We're doing perfect. And I'm Florian and I'm coloring. Welcome to Pull Trick Shot Two. Now everybody knows these guys. You've been on the internet for about 22 seconds. Do perfect to someone you know. One of the beautiful yeah, things about working from home right now is uh, we actually get to drink beer while we're working and talking to you guys. So. Do you have a rule three drink minimum on stream? <laughs> what's really interesting is those guys have uh, have quite a different uh, age bracket as far as the you know their, their audience is. So it's really good because they was able to really impact a lot of the youth. And I think we inspired a lot of juniors with that video. To be honest with you, because it's just those guys are so big. You know, it's, it was right. amazing to be part of it. And this is volume two, so we had the first one, which is pretty good. But this one was just another. And the reason is, is because the facility was just 
awesome, you know. I mean, this is like a playground for adults. So what else do you need? And yeah. so where was where is this facility? This is uh, near uh, I think Dallas, uh, near Dallas in Outside Texas. Dallas. Okay. And so yeah, what? They, these guys these guys saw you on online and, and gave you a call. Their agent gave you a call. How did this work? Yeah, that's it. Basically, we have the same network as far as uh, the YouTube uh, YouTube goes. So we have the same people kind of helping us out. <laughs> kind of a different level but you know and uh, they put us in touch and so we did the first one the first one was was really successful i think he got like 60 70 million views or something like that and so we just went back for doing the next level and obviously by then those guys were even bigger i mean i believe right now they're number one as far as subscriber grows in, in the u.s so um, i think it's a, it's a very very successful you know I've been a guy, so yeah. I mean, what is? I mean, I don't need much, you know. You give me tables, <laughs> I mean, I don't care. You know, this was a one-day shoot, but from the morning to the night, and I'm I, I'm able to go crazy. It's perfect, you know, like this. And when am I going to be able to shoot a a cue ball, you know, into a whole thing? And from the second floor, I mean, that's a, that doesn't that doesn't exist in real life, you know. And, it's like, <laughs> and, and how many times so did it take much. to do that? How many times did it take? Uh, this, to do that? this was awful. This took probably like a, this probably took like forty minutes, I'll say. Wow. Yeah, it's too bad I don't have I don't have a picture to show you, but I literally broke my ferrule. My ferrule got like squeezed like that. It was amazing. It's something you've never seen before. And it's so, what were these what were these guys? I mean, these guys come across when I see them on video. They come across as super cool. Like you want to hang out with them. Like total fun. I mean, and sometimes I know celebrities and things personality wise are different in person. How were they to work with? Well, I mean, I guess it depends who's, you know, because it's a bunch of different guys. So some of them are a little more, I'll say, down to earth than some others. Some of those guys, you can tell, you know, they're just, uh, oh, that's what it is now. And then some of the others are, you know, they're just really enjoying it and they're just really, you know, taking whatever they can out of it. It's just, I think at their level, it just went so big that it's it's way more of a business than people think and sure. it's how to act, you know, and that's kind of a skill. You got to act on the on the point like that. And uh, but this was very uh, inspiring because as far as making him professional, even just for me, you know, you can see the equipment, the team they have, all the little in between, how to coordinate. I mean, there's a lot of things that I've been able to kind of take and try to recreate. Now, the only thing that they have and I don't have is they have sort of a social interaction between themselves, right? Which I don't because I'm basically alone in my in my thing. But it's uh, no, it, it's fun, and I think what it is is just yeah, the amount of possibilities you have in this facility is just is special. You know, if if we were to do to do that for us, it would cost us a fortune because rent yeah. the thing and this and that. I mean, this is just you know. Yeah. It would just take days logistically too because you'd have to travel, yeah. break down, set up, travel, break down, set up for each of these different mm -hmm. shots. Well, and on top of that, thing about those tables, you know, they, they basically bought those tables because we just destroyed them. I mean, we even, like rented it. Well, they we don't just, call you Venom for, they for nothing, them, man. They didn't care, you know. I got 10,000, who cares, you know. That doesn't matter, you know. I was like, okay, because you know, if I shoot a ball from the second floor and he drops on the wood, there's a crater in the wood and it doesn't matter what brand it is you know so yeah and so what is what is like this project here this had to be big for your career right like what, what where does this rank i mean in terms of i'm guessing you you do this video and suddenly the the phone starts ringing a lot more often and people are wanting to book you for stuff i mean what does this do for your career it's not as easy as, as it is really i think it's more a personal achievement than anything uh i mean it is good obviously for views and stuff like that as far as branding goes but it's still a little bit different. It's not quite the same. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it was really that big. The one thing that was really big is the subscriber counts uh, from one channel to another. This is simply because, you know, they're so big that the residual they bring you is, is amazing. Right. It, uh, you know, and I don't know how many subscribers, I probably have 100,000 subscribers, you know, just from this video, so. It's interesting too because I'm kind of watching online. Speaking of that, actually, I'm going to stop you there. This is probably the best shot I've done in my career. One of the very best. This is, and this takes you how, how professional those guys are and how willing to do crazy stuff, you know, to get the views there there are. Because I would have never stand there like ever. Period. <laughs> and how God many times? How many is. times did that shot take? That was a five minute deal because you Dude, can't. Guys just, rock. You die. So I had to be right on it, and I try I always try to miss high, right? And then I try lower. But if I missed it low, I might mean, have just hit the guy in the face, and that would have been over. So, no, this was uh, yeah, this was. But 
And I told the guys, like, dude, you got to wear a helmet. There's no way. I can't, I can't trust myself. I've never done that. I don't know how to control it. It's just, but no, that, you know, that's how committed they are to, uh, to getting the views. And that's quite a skill because I don't know any people that have done it. I don't, have done it. I don't think Steve would have done it. And he trusts me on some crazy thing. So. Yeah. So how Not many shot, How many times? How many times did he get? Did he take a ball to the face or the head? No, not on this one. That's a very one. happy man right there. <laughs> very relieved man. <laughs> Crazy. I, I, I love the new perfect people, stuff. man. Oh, I've, I've done it. I mean, and you've seen shows live. You know, I, I hit people pretty much everywhere, mostly in the nuts. But you know, I, I do hit people. So. And so, like, how many production people are on this shoot? Because I know they have high end production. Like, how many people are we talking about? Well, they actually only have two guys filming and an editor, I believe. So, wow. this is, you know, this is not too much. But they're all in-house, so that means they all have the logistic in there already. They have all the material, so they don't have to move around. It's, it's pretty simple for them. It's just uh, they're uh, record, you know, full-time uh, filmer and uh, editor. So, it's just it's all they do. And um, This they, is I their think, product. This is their right, rigid, that helps this them is their with the car, ID. this is their tire. Yeah, prop guys. I mean, they, they have, you know, sort of think about it like a small TV crew, pretty much. It's the best I could put it. Yeah. Very cool stuff. And did this did this video set you on a path? Because I know you've done a number of collaborations now over the years with other sports. Was this the video that kind of started you on the collaboration path? Or had you already started on that? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Because before that, it was mostly collabs between other pool trick shot guys. And then I realized that we might be able to cross more disciplines together, actually. And sort of make it cool. And I, I had one that I really liked with uh, a card a card thrower who was on the America's Got Talent and all those things. And it was pretty quite amazing because we all had a different skill and it sort of applies to it a little bit. And then I did uh, I did one with a juggler. I mean, there's some a few few ones that are really cool. And uh, yeah, honestly, they they deserve to bet better views. But it's you, know, you never quite know with viral videos. It's hard to control. So about that magic dude we randomly bumped yeah. into Flor i don't know if i ever told you this jason i remember that right we bumped into florian on fremont street in vegas <laughs> as he was filming that video with that guy and i don't know if we made it into the video i think we did it's been a while since i watched it we i made think you it, did right? yeah yeah so I, was, I think it was i don't know if it was me but it may have been one person in the group that was in that video that was a cool hey, remember this guy did, right? hard on the on the building yeah, like if you go to Vegas, that uh, that that Fremont zipline thing, right? That's yeah. just, it was betting everybody. It was telling them if you can throw a card into where those guys are starting a zipline, there, it'll give you a thousand bucks cash. And people are trying, and it, the card goes and I fly, like, you know, and that's it. Nobody can do it, and the guy goes and throw it, and he goes in there, and everybody's like, "What's going on?" You know. So and crazy. Don't know the guy how standing on the ground, on. doing on top of a two-story building, a playing card, like wow. a deck of. And a playing card too. Yeah. So crazy next one so dude perfect yeah let's move on let's see what the next video looks like oh pool okay, ball. So another, yeah, another, 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 yeah another collaboration here right yeah jason belmonte professional bowler and florian team up for this one Where, what casino was this in i think it was the gold coast and uh, gold coast. there you go yeah just won the u.s open very recently uh bowling u.s open so you blinked just say look at his face he's like Ooh. <laughs> I would, I, I would keep saying, you know, one uh, hit, being hit by a pool ball is one thing, being hit by a bowling ball is dead. So, you know, I, I'd rather not die that day, but he was professional, so. <laughs> I was actually at this shoot for a while. I was, I was out yeah, in Vegas for something, and we, we stopped in. I think Kevin and I actually appear, like, late in this video somewhere, but you see our legs or something at least. But it was pretty cool, because I, you know, I had obviously been on the set of the Riviera shot, uh, the shoot that we did there, but this was totally different, because... You had Belmonte, who, you know, in the bowling scene, he, he's like one of the top bowlers in the world, right? Oh, he's the man. I mean, I think he's like number, I don't know if he's number one, but like say, he just won the U.S. Open this year. I mean, he won so many majors. And yeah, he's, he's, he's one of the biggest names, one of the most famous. So Yeah, so to see you guys, you know, doing your things kind of tandem was, was really a very, for me as a viewer, was a very cool experience to see, no doubt. Yeah, this what's really Belmonte cool is this here, guy, right? Yeah, it's the the respect everybody has for the other one because we know how many hours it took and the skills. And even though we can't do whatever the other guy is doing, it's just it kind of crosses over and all those hours and it kind of makes sense. And it's just it's very cool. Yeah, I really like that. It was, yeah. 
And how is that when you start collaborating with somebody? Because there's probably got to be a certain chemistry, kind of like we talked about with the models. Like, you need somebody that's professional. There's got to be some decent chemistry. You know, I'm sure that, 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 that yeah, something, I'm sure some of the people you work with are easier to work with than others. Um, how does how does this video, how does Jason Belmonte, uh, in terms of collaboration? Well, as far as the, the creative process, it was great because I could match up basically all his shots on a pool table, sort of the same concept. And, you know, like this, you know, this is great. Like, this is just logical, jump over, you know, big, small ball, whatever. It's still a, still a ball sport, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, now, the bigger it's issue bigger ball ball. is I never realized, you know, you might be able to do, like, I don't know, 10, tri 10 tries for me, and it takes one try for the guy doing the bowling shot. So, simply because you got to go reset the pins and the distance and the focus because the ball is so much heavier, it's more of a, a little more physical. So while I just go and grab the ball and put it right back in the spot and just go back for it, he only did enough, you know what I mean? So I was able to go much faster than this. I realized that you know, a pool trick shot is not so bad after all because I wouldn't see myself being able to do a bowling trick shot show because it just takes so long to reset everything that it's very hard to keep the crowd entertained. So there, what I can do. For live, it would be much more difficult. And like this, I remember just to balance the pins on top of the others. I mean, it just took us a while. And uh, yeah, I was able to help and you know help with the props and everything. And uh, it was just uh, yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> and so, how did you two? How did you, how did this one come together? How did you guys find each other? Well, actually, this was from the Dude Perfect because I believe Jason Belmonte was on the Dude Perfect as well. We had a viral video with them, I had a viral video with them, and then I think uh, he reached out to me and was like, yeah, that makes total sense because pool and bowling is so close, and we're both trying to uh, improve the sports and our numbers, you know, as far as the sports goes. And, I mean, to be honest with you, a lot of pool players are bowlers and a lot of bowlers are pool players. So it, it felt like it was a natural synergy, yeah? And, um, yeah, so it just, it was kind of normal, and then we obviously realized that, once again, you need a budget because... Nobody wants to work for free. I mean, it's not actually we, we want to work for free, but we don't want to lose money, right? Right. And hire a professional crew like that. I mean, this was an expensive video, so we're happy again that uh, AP was able to help us out and just you know bring kind of a dream to 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 life. And I I, I quite don't know if we reach exactly how many people we wanted to do, but the one thing I know is. Well, yeah. That was a mild one thing I know yeah. is that is everybody in both communities really liked it, and I had only good feedback from bowlers and pool players, all of it. So nice. Who would you say, in terms of collaboration, like what what's your favorite collab that you've done uh, with somebody else? Is it the card guy? You've kind of mentioned that one, and do you have a favorite? Yeah, uh, I, I really think this guy is really impressive because he's. I, I don't know. It's just the fact that you can do magic, and then the cards also like a physical skill. So there's a lot of skills involved, and you can you can just you know the hours, you know, and it's very easy to work with. You know, very uh, very nice, very very good. With I mean, it's just the only problem I have with it is every time he comes into a collab, I got cards in my house everywhere, like literally. I just, <laughs> You're finding him for months. <laughs> I, I don't know how many cards you can, you know he wastes, but it, it's amazing. Like you find them everywhere. It's like you go to the restaurants, like hey, there's a playing card here. What's going on? <laughs> you know. That's funny stuff. Steve, what do we got next? One quick question about this video: How many yeah. how many pool balls were lost during the making of this video? I'm not sure. You know, I I have More like than a, one balls, and I just kind of have a bunch. Thankfully, I'm sponsored by Aramis, so I'm okay. So I got a trade. <laughs> Sometimes you come with 15 and you're left with 10, or you know, if you leave with 12 or 13, it's like okay, so. And so the Gold Coast is still pulling pool balls out of gutters, maybe. Just it like might be, gutters. yeah. There might be a few in the gutters there, yeah. Gold Coast is doing the same video somewhere else to say the exact same thing about you, Floyd. I love it. All right, nice video. That's funny. That's funny. Right, oh, what do we got here? So this one. is a de this is a desert shoot, huh? That is one of my latest video and uh, probably one of my. Not a one of my sort of dream that I was trying to, you know, kind of make happen, and it just took really years to materialize simply because it's just too complicated. And uh, once again, this was uh, thanks to Pool Dog, really pulled pull up and believed in the project. And uh, yeah, my idea was always, you know, you try to um, take pool tables out of the pool, you know, make it a little more extreme, make it more of an extreme sport for what I'm doing at least, so we can kind of reach out to. A different crowd that's a little more uh, uh, slightly different, you know, try to break the codes, break the barriers. Sure. 
the idea to make this more extreme was to simply go in more extreme location. So uh, where is location. where is this location? Where are yeah, this is what we call Valley of Fire. It's only an hour north of Vegas. So for every team they're able to go to the championship in Vegas or singles, uh, I, I highly suggest you go there. Right, it's guys, pretty hot, here, uh, but it, it's now. absolutely it's beautiful. Valley of Fire. Yeah, Valley of Fire. I can't Come believe it'd be hot. It, it looks like Mars, okay? It's not even like Earth. It's, it's one of the. I think it's a national park. It's 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 gorgeous. It's something else. Uh, yeah, we tried. We lost a few pool balls out there too. Oh, I, I bet. Okay, so we, we got them back for most of them, but... Uh, so how hot was it when you shot this? Like, what's Nathan the temperature there. like? Uh, yeah, Nathan, yeah, Nathan that was out there who uh, was doing most of the, the, high so project, the high project we have. How and, hot was uh, it? I don't it remember. I think he was in uh, water, May, uh, probably, uh, so yeah, probably close to 100 degrees, something like that. And this is probably the nice. coolest landscape. And you could see the challenge of getting that. I'm sure setting that table up in the dirt and everything else was had to be just a bear of a challenge. Yeah, it was uh, a little Perhaps over uh, overestimation like of our so, skills you know, again, you know. Since we cannot just, do a what's the big deal, you know, pull a pool table in a cart, so you just don't realize that it doesn't really work on the sand. So no, it sure we had to drag this thing all over. No more gravel uh, either. Yeah. Boy, and how about yeah, how about the dust factor? I mean, you've got up, you got high end cameras, you got a pool table. I mean, what's the dust factor out there, and how is that impacting equipment? Oh, it's impacting the equipment a lot because I mean, first off, it's almost never leveled. Because really, you level and level, you know. So it means most of the shots have to be pretty fast, or at least you know really well done. Uh, like this, you know, there's no really leveling that goes into play, so you kind of have it. Uh, the dust is a pain in the butt, but actually, what's worse is the sun, right? So the lighting, the wind, the this. wind is also terrible because the balls move. So it's all great, and it looks fantastic in videos, but. The pain and the sweat and tears that go that goes in there is uh, is just amazing. So, would you say this is your hardest one that that you've pr actually produced and shot? Probably because the shots are really really high skill levels. Like those, you know, those. It's only a couple seconds in the video, but this is dramatically hard. This is not it's something. Hours. You know, so to pull it live during only a few hours of sun, you gotta be ready. You know, you gotta be bring your A game and uh, you can't delay the production too much because you know it's it's money there it's just flying the light it's flying by the minute so we I think we had to go there left the house probably four in the morning drive up there you know set up everything start as soon as the sun is out and just keep going all day until you're basically burnt out and when you think you're Literally, done in this case you really got to move the table, and as this is hard. The pool table is heavy. I mean, I don't think I, I don't remember exactly how much this one's probably weighed, but I'll probably say about 1,200 pounds, something like that. So maybe well, more. I wanted to ask you about the table here because I know you work with Rassen, but here you're using a diamond. Did that have to do with mobility and, and ability to get it around, or was it just sponsorship related? No, it wasn't sponsorship related. It was literally because we had to move this table quickly out yeah. of this because you might not see it necessarily but it's all different locations so we moved the table about three or four times there and this table is a one-piece slate so it was much easier to move so you can literally just put it in a cart put it in a truck drive guys, put it down the problem is it's really heavy shirt, and it's really not practical to uh, uh, to it. move so when you've got to drag it on the sand you know it's just uh, it's not quite fun so <laughs> uh, this was nice. a <laughs> <laughs> I guess Heck no. Yeah, that looks like it'd be quite the challenging terrain, and I, I'm guessing it doesn't rain a whole lot in the Valley of Fire. But I mean, are you watching the weather too to make sure? Because yeah, of course, yeah, we had know, to, Vegas, uh, Vegas. You do get, you know, rain. flash thunderstorms and rain that come in, and we got pretty lucky there. But it was, uh, you know, it was acceptable. I guess it rained a little bit before the the, the latest shoot I've done. Though those videos are not out yet. Those are tutorials for uh, an outdoor uh, pool table. And uh, we went into a uh, dry, uh, dry lake bed. And so the first day was a nightmare because we had so much wind. You put the oh, ball there, yeah. it would move. So, you know, you really can't do anything. And then I think we did the second day, it was okay. And then we had a third day. And the third day, people decided to bring uh, uh, air, uh, RC air. And it went everywhere all over. So we had all the sound, it was all messed up. And so you're waiting, you're trying to talk, and then there's. You know, right in front of you. Now, you know, Steve, like, the video we're watching here. This is—is is this a new video? No, this is the same it's video. The, it's the same, yeah. It's okay, the same. Hey, so we're still. Awesome. Yeah, the, the the concept here was to make as long and as entertaining as a video as possible, and just sort of like, uh, 
I'll say it's the final touch, but it's you know it's probably one of the one of the latest big project for a little while because obviously you know I, I bought the league and you know I was going to be busy and uh, I knew I won't have as much time and resources to put into it. So this was really just for more of myself and just put a bunch like of touch. Master Rock, kind of. And, and so, so where was just, where was this portion of the of this video shot? Where is this facility? This still still in Vegas. Uh, this was actually a studio. Uh, we had a good deal on it. So a friend of mine was able to do it during uh, you know uh, dead hours, basically. So same thing at night uh, during days that nobody rented it. Always well, got to be a little smart about those. Uh, so There's deals to be had. And so yep. one of the other things that I've noticed with all the videos, the, the color of the balls, you use the, you know, the, just the, the black and red and, and the white. Is that just because you believe, you know, visually that's the best or what's the reasoning there but instead of the, the traditional set of balls? That was probably one of the one of the best concepts we had. And I, I don't even remember if it was Nathan or I, who's basically the original guy, you know, producing the videos. And the one main issue we noticed when the first trick shot videos we're watching is it's pretty hard to see what ball are you're actually hitting. Like, is it a fluke or is it not a fluke, right? So the main thing was to make sure we eliminate all the flukes so people know the shot is legit and it's exactly what was intended. So what we did is we just decided the red ball is going to be the object ball to make and the black ball is going to be the object ball to avoid, so the obstacle ball, right? And that way, there was no question, like, you hit a red ball, you know it's good. You know, if, if the red ball's left on the table, that means the shot is no good. So we simplified everything, and it was funny because when we came up with the people were telling us we're crazy not to use numbers, and now it's just a logical thing. And uh, but those are those are standard balls, because I hear that a lot. Those are absolutely standard balls, they're Hermes balls, the only difference is they're just one color. Mm. And believe it or not, it's actually cheaper to make those balls because the numbers are not on it, so it doesn't cost much. Interesting, interesting. And I know this was one that you did with Nathan as well. We've talked a lot about Nathan. You kind of see him off camera there, but how many? Yes, there's Nathan. There's Nathan. Super talented dude. You mentioned out of out of Canada. Suddenly, tragedy strikes. I know you have my. Oh! 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 oh. 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 Yeah, I'm not proud of that one. <laughs> Dig, Florian. <laughs> oh, I bet you feel they, terrible. They, they, they're paid for it, okay? So don't feel as bad. But yeah, that was pretty brutal. And what was her reaction? I don't miss quite often, but I, I do miss sometimes. And usually, if I do miss, I, I mostly hit myself. And so but, she rap, and that was a wrap for her that day, huh? That was it. She was yeah, out of there. Pretty much. It. I think there was enough at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine. You take a cue ball to the head. I get you. Get, you get to go home a little early, but you take a cue ball to the head. Yeah, mild concussion. Has anybody checked in on her to make sure she's all right today? I mean, did we did we follow up? Yeah, she's up? still okay, I think. I mean, uh, yeah. Does she still talk to you is the question. Yeah, I'm guessing you never worked with her again. Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't so remember it, who she is. But I, but I want to go back to Nathan real quick, because I know he's been a part of so many of your videos. How many videos have you guys done together? Uh, we've done Venom 1, Venom 2, Venom 3, so that's what? already it. Then we've done the, one, the APA he was, he was involved, the one at the Riviera, yep. Yeah, uh, and he's, he's been always almost involved in almost all of the viral videos. And the reason is, is to record pool, you need to be a pool player because the ball moves so quickly. And I've tried it with several, I've tried it with different producers and some guys do a better job than others, but really the main focus is to try to follow the ball. And if you don't understand what the cue ball is doing, you really can't record it well. And there's a few basic concepts and it just, you know, and it takes uh, it takes dedication too because Nathan will be one of the guys that will believe in me and like, you know, you have a stupid shot that you have to try for an hour, but it's worth it. In my opinion, it's worth it to get it. He will stick to it and do the same motion, you know, for an hour. Meanwhile, you hire somebody and they will just be like, ah, you know, it's not going to work. Just give me something easy. He's emotionally invested in it because he, Which I can, you know? player, he's, exactly. he respects it yeah. in an art form and he approaches it that way. Whereas you hire well, somebody and, who's not, it's just another job. And, and they're different things too. You know, there's, to me, there's different things for trick shot. There's three aspects. To you. There's the live shows aspect where you have three tries, you got to make your shot or you're, otherwise you kind of go to the next one. There's the competition where we don't really pick your shots. You've got to make also in two or three tries. And then there's the videos when you just got to like basically make whatever you want, but the, idea, the, the, the goal is to make it as crazy, as special, and as new as possible. And those right. are three different, very different aspects. And sometimes one goes in one category and goes to the third one, but you know it doesn't necessarily cross over. And some shots are, are beautiful live, but they don't really make any sense in the video. And the reverse works the same way. So 
And one of the thing is to find a guy that's dedicated enough. And I don't even know if it's dedication or stupidity at this point for us. But it's, still <laughs> stuff, a, you know? it's sometimes funny how close those two things are related, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't really see, but I mean, I got I got a blister here, and I, you know, I'm literally having blister from playing pool. I mean, this is you know, I'm the only guy I know that has blister from playing pool. So it's just it's how crazy it gets. And he will be the only one following me till four in the morning, and you know, it's not much I can do. You know, it's just it works out good. And uh, uh, the last project we've been working on is uh, tutorials, by high, advanced tutorials, and those are starting to be released monthly monthly basis probably right now. And I think we have the first one out that you guys can check out on my on my YouTube. Um, also, I work with Pool Dog. Uh, it's going to be covering all the breaks and stuff like that. So we're doing a bunch of different things. Awesome! You're always working, man. So what what's this next video we got here? Uh, this is probably one of my favorites. Uh, and also, actually, it probably got the title of most viewed pool video of all time. This one right here is your biggest. And this is about half a billion views altogether, not just on my YouTube but on all platform combined. Okay. Yeah, and the same, same. This this was shot in Germany. So uh, when we recorded the Venom Trick Shot Two, we did I think ten or eleven countries to record it, and that was over the, the course of a month. So this was a German segment, and uh, that's the uh, the pool I learned how to play pool too. So just where it started. Yeah, you know, I I uh, I started Trick Shot right, and I didn't know how to play, so I started to do shows. And in the show, I got people wanting to do challenge matches, and here I am, you know, I'm playing like an APA three, but I'm not a three, but like a four or five, okay? And I'm uh, and I'm doing, you know, crazy trick shots, so it made no sense. So after uh, after a couple of years, I decided it was enough. So <laughs> I went to Germany, right? And I was in this pool that was in large Germany, and I practiced with the owner who was a German champion uh, like a while back, and he basically kicked my butt for six months. And all I did was rocking eight hours a day every weekend. You know, it was it was stupidness the same way. And the guy, because it was so good that nobody wanted to play with him. Nobody wanted to rock for him, right? So, and after six months, I got bored. Oh, you can see the guy out there. After six months, I got bored of not doing a table and I started run out. And that was it. And then I, you know, became a good player from there. <laughs> but to this day, that guy will still call me Rack Master. And he's the only guy that knows it, apart from you guys now. And now everybody we've streamed. It's hard and cool, you know? <laughs> So what? Uh, did he's probably the 400 million views. Uh, proper explanation there. What do you What do you attribute the success of this video to, or, or what? Even even you said this is actually one of your personal favorites as well. Like, what what makes this one stand above some of the others? It was fun. Uh, you can see a few beers on the sides out there. Uh, the first, the same one we had in the first video. Her name is uh, Adriana. She's the best to work with. Like, she's an absolute champ. Okay, would, so same girl, same girl, I just realized. Yeah, that. she would take, get hits like super hard, and she's like, that's okay, and go back at it, you know? Like, she would have literally like, uh, you know, redness from staying on the table, and she would just be okay with it. It was, uh, it was quite amazing, always smiling, and, you know, and also on top of that, also had IDs, because one of the main problems is we also try to always have sort of an interaction between a model and, and, uh, and the shots, because otherwise it's kind of just boring. The idea is not to make a... It's not to just stay and have like a, a, a non, you know, a live obstacle, to, you know, like this, for example, you know, this was her ID, just move the hand or something like that. There's a bunch of different things that we just kind of, it helps. And he, the flow of the video is partially because of her involvement. It made it a lot more fun and a lot, a lot better to watch pretty much. So Nice. And so did you, with her, did you guys have to bring her from the States or from Canada to Germany? To yeah, she is uh, actually Canadian, but she was, uh, she, I think she believed she lives in Spain at this, at this current moment, so we had to pay her flight from Spain. Huh. Uh, and we flew over, stayed a day there, recorded all night, same thing. And uh, yeah, the next day she was back on a plane. How many countries have you been okay. to, Florian, out of curiosity? Oh, I think uh, I'm closing on 45 countries. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Two states, by the way, so whoever listening to me, I missed a show in Alaska for APA, and I believe we live Wyoming. So if you're listening, that's the only two states I'm missing. And I've done Wyoming shows. and Alaska. So if you want to yeah. put a show with Florian, Wyoming and Alaska, he's, you know, maybe he'll give you a little. Uh, oh, no, I will, because he is And I completes my map, so. There you Extra go. And, shot and a glacier with polar bears? There you go. I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, guys the limits. <laughs> And what's the favorite place you've been? I mean, you've been so many places. Where do you? What do you really like? Where do you like? Honestly, where I live right now, you know. Vegas, I, huh? 
Vegas, yeah. The thing I love about Vegas is uh, it's it's a land of opportunity, at least it used to be until now. You know what I mean? It's just you you can do whatever you want. Everything is always open. You work hard. You you can get it your way. Uh, it's pretty good open companies and, and business. I mean, like I say, you know, again, it's, it's quite different right at this exact moment. But uh, I know I could have never done whatever I've done if I was in France. There's just simply no way. And uh, you know, forever grateful to be in the U.S. for that. So. Right, for sure. What do we got next, Steve? Are we almost at the end of our playlist here? I can make it at the end. Well, we've been on an oh. hour. How many more do we got? I want to say... Bro. I, don't, I don't know. A couple? And this was a very, very short selection. This is a, I think we have ten all together. We're at an hour. I, I got to be real honest. I've not kept track. Okay, so this one here, this, this, this video... My favorite as far as the technical side of it goes, those are the hardest shots I've ever put in the video and I, I will stand by it. And uh, this was shot in a, in a little small studio, same thing, we had carpet on the wall and it was really, really a ghetto set if you pardon the language, you know, but the shots are so advanced that, I mean, to me they are worth it. And, I, and I where, where was this one, sorry Florian, where is this one shot at? Vegas, uh, same Vegas, okay. people I had home moved it in this little studio. But uh, yeah, I don't believe anybody's gonna come close to be able to do a, a video that technically advanced in a while. So this is why it's in there. Yeah, I mean, really the setup that you guys kind of initially came up with for the first video and have kind of kept this dark, you know, setup, all the light on the table, very minimal color. I mean, these are, these are this is kind of, you guys crafted this and it's just, it's beautiful, it's art. I mean, it really is. You say you do it because you yeah. have to cover up the studio, I mean, I, I, I'm telling you now, I agree with Jason, everybody, this is like, this is rad, like, this it's, is It's your trademark stops. now, trademark. Like, well, it is, it's, it's kind of great. branding, you know, and it's just, really, if the shots are good enough, and the content on the table is good enough, you don't need anything on the side, you know? There's no point in having something fancy on the background if you don't, you know, if the shots are good enough, they will make up for it, so. I remember one time when we first met, we were just Whoa. sitting chat and chilling about it, just talking to YouTube and just, you know, and you had said something to me that I've repeated to other people when, when talking about you, you said, uh, on your YouTube thumbnails especially, they'll, they'll click for the girl, they'll click to watch the video for the girl because their hero will stay in those shots. That's the, that's the hope at least, you know, I mean, I, I don't like to use props too much for my trick shots because I like them very styled and, and very clean. But, uh, you know, having a, the human aspect in a girl is just a glamorous thing and it really is, is Vegas matching, you know? I know, you know, in those day and age it might feel like it's a little not proper, but to me, it's more art than anything. It is not an improper use of, of women, you know? It's just, it's just art and it just looks better, sort of like a magician uses beautiful things in the system. This is sort of the same and that's what I always wanted in it, but yeah. Women are beautiful. Yeah, I think I think that comparing it to a magician, that's that's a good analogy too. I think it makes a lot of sense. Really, those shots here were you know, my favorite, my absolute best. I was just you know top of my game at this point, and uh, yeah, I, I practice a little less now that I have the pool league. But you know, in a month after quarantine, I can tell you, I'll be probably right back at this. <laughs> you know, it's fine. Another thing that you told me a long, long time ago was uh, I asked just kind of when you five, six, seven years ago, before you were as big as you are now, I asked you, I was like, what are you, what's your goal? Like, what would make you happy, I think is what I phrased. And you responded, Steve, all I want to do is get locked in a room and play pool and make videos. That, that, that is very true, you know. Unfortunately, you know, when the money, the financial aspect comes into play, it's a little different, but I can tell you that right now, so we have, uh, I have a guy that's actually stuck in the, in, in, in the house with us because he was supposed to start working for the league and, uh, He's a good friend of mine from France, but we got stuck here in quarantine. His flight got canceled and everything. So, but he's leaving there, and he's basically telling me I'm a madman because he's trying to go to bed, and it's four or five in the morning, and I'm just banging the table, you know. And it's just right. I'm sure your neighbors love you. Know, you know, I think my neighbor probably hates me too. <laughs> but I don't even know four how. Four five um, in the morning. God, God, yeah, it's just no. <laughs> but it, I don't know. It's like a weird connection I have with it, and like I really, you know, it kind of. My brain just kind of shut down and just all I do is just play and then do the trick shots and I... It's, it's a happy place, man. Problem else, you know, and then, you know, you go back, it's sort of like uh, going for a job, you know, but in a, in a, in a weird way, I guess. And do you, uh, do you explain your... Because I know you just built the house, what, two years ago, somewhere in there? Yeah. Do you, did you go out and, t and talk to the neighbors and say, hey, look, 
Uh, if you hear like a lot of banging, it's not me like punching the wall. It's actually me playing. Uh, I mean, yeah, you, we you, you kind of like introduce that topic to people so they know. <laughs> and then wife, yeah, like, yeah, he's we, not hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you one thing: it was hard to shop for the house because to find space to fit the tables was this big issue. So, and how know? many tables you got at home? Uh, I have four right now. <laughs> what? Of course you do. Well, okay, so I have the trick shot table, which is the one that gets beat up. So once you got a trick shot table, you cannot play pool anymore. So I got a normal pool table. Then I have a, a carom table, you know, no pockets, 10 foot table. This is sort of my, it's my fun thing. I'm trying to get pretty good at this game. And then the last one is an outdoor table I just recently got after filming the video and we just have it in the garden. So, I mean, it's more of a dining pool table. Pool table in your garden, brother, I dig it. Still is there, you know, so, and I know a bunch of you guys would probably love to have that four stable there, so I'm not going to complain. You'll never hear me complain. Yeah, there's a lot of pool players out there right now. They're like, he's got four tables, and I got this little one, and I'm really <laughs> I know, playing a little, the... little Walgreens table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's um, the hint. There's no, there's no cool TV here, here, okay? So that's weird. The weird spot. We don't even have a living room, pretty much. It's just pool table. This how house is <laughs> for work, okay? We got the office, and then we got a pool table and the bedroom, and that's about it. The rest is uh, it's kind of sacrificed. I don't know how she can put up with it to be honest with you so far, but I'm pretty I'm, I'm a lucky guy, so. And who's this guy in this video with you, Florian? That's a good friend of mine from Poland. He used to be a world champion in trick shot as well. And uh, yeah, that was uh, another one of my projects to just kind of like try to get as as good as a collaboration as possible, you know, for two players to make it more interesting. And uh, yeah, it, it worked out pretty good. Uh, I think I might have killed the guy though after it. He was I don't think what it is what i am until they start working with us and uh yeah i think you might have a little bit scared after that <laughs> I, as, Ooh, as, a, that? as a film guy when you were doing those shots over the bar there i'm thinking don't hit the lights don't hit the lights <laughs> you know what i mean anyway go ahead sorry i was just gonna ask out of all the people that you've done out of all the pool players that you've done things with i'm curious who you've worked best with in that regard as a professional pool player or yeah, trick shot. It's it, just a pool player, not necessarily a, a card person or a bowling person. I, but... pool players, I, I know most of the pros, you know, and we all have, well, it's weird because at first, you know, kind of, I, I kind of had no respect from the peers because they thought it was more of a circus act than anything. But then the more the, the shots got elaborated and, and the skills got involved, they realized that, damn, you know, I, they can't do it. I, I can't do it. The same way I couldn't do what they would do, but I, you know, they can't do what I'm doing. So then it, it kind of changed everything, and uh, but I had a good uh, a good go at it with uh, Darren Appleton back then. We had a few challenges, and we kept it you know fair. Like I didn't do any mass or stuff like that. It was purely you kept it fair. It How many people can say that? that. I, I kept it fair for Darren Appleton. Well, it's no. just you know, I mean, well you know, let's be honest. He could put me a drill that I can never do, but I could put him a mass he could never do. So we had to sort right. of find a, a fine line. So it was all skill shot, but we had a good go at it. Uh, I always have fun with uh, Carl Boyes at the the match from events and stuff. I like was that. gonna mention that at the Moscone Cup this yeah. year. I know that I know they had you out there doing some trick shots with the VIPs and stuff, and it looked like Carl was having a tough time. Uh, of course, Carl Boyes is now the assistant captain of Team Europe in the Moscone yeah. Cup, but it looked like he was having trouble recreating the shots you were doing, and he was uh, quite entertained by it, by the challenge. Well, it, it, you know, it's it, it's it's a different skill. It really is, and uh, it's one thing to be able to shoot a ball straight, but to be able to go three or and have the ball still mass A doesn't necessarily make sense. And you can be a world champion. I don't mean, you know, if you don't practice it, there's not much you can do. And uh, it's just, it's a lot of hours I put and, you know, it used to really impact me when I saw the comments like, oh, he tries a million times, he can do it live, whatever. But realistically, you know, nobody can. So, and nobody can even have the drive to do it for most of the shots. So. It's, it's kind of a talent too, I guess. Just uh, obstination, I guess. Hey, when you create these videos, I mean, I know you use a lot of different platforms. You use Facebook, you use YouTube, uh, you use Instagram. When you're creating, I mean, does the platform go into the thought process or are you creating, you know, the, the art that you want and then you're splicing it up or cutting it up for the different platforms? How do you create yeah, it, it? Yeah, absolutely comes into play. I mean, obviously Instagram's very different than YouTube. And on top of that, the algorithm changed very, very often. So on YouTube, you got a tendency to try to go longer. Uh, and it just, it's a weird thing. So that's why we try to go for like a 10 minute video sometimes. I try to at least go three minutes. And Instagram is pretty easy because it's just a, 
a short highlight, so you just pick kind of the best shot of the video and just kind of space it out. Uh, I kind of like Instagram, but I, I took it a little late because I didn't really believe in the platform when it first started. But uh, YouTube and Facebook, I really had a good, good grip on it, and I know kind of what people want to see. And especially now, you know, it's okay to have a little longer contents. And uh, I think in the future, there's going to be a little more replay, a little more behind the scenes and stuff like that, just to uh, just to get the length a little higher. So, nice. like, to me, as a personal opinion, I'm you know I'm basically raised over around this Red Bull style video, which is uh, short, fast, action paced, and. Uh, if I able to just saw you know every shot like this, bam, 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 in two minutes, I'll be happy. But you kind of have to follow what people want to see as well. So don't shave against the grain, yeah. Yeah. So I will say that the next video is the last video. Oh, is it? Is, it, is, it, is that our last. special? Is it our special surprise video? Yes. Oh, uh -oh. Lori, we got a special surprise video. I'm gonna right? hate it. If it's the elf video, I'm gonna kill you. Ah! <laughs> Play the video. Damn, that's, that is ruthless. <laughs> that is ruthless. <laughs> All right. You know, I hated this thing. It was the worst elf costume I've ever seen. <laughs> so here's the story on this video. So every year, APA produces around Christmas some type of holiday video just to wish our members a... Uh, you know, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and so we called Florian. We had we had previously done a really good trick shot video with Doctor Q in a Santa outfit, and we thought, and you know, we really let's well see if yeah, we thought Florian, well, you know, he, he doesn't make a good Santa Claus, but maybe Elf on the Shelf, like he, you know, <laughs> and so you initially agreed, but Dang. I think when you got the costume on, Dang. you were like, I got a text from from Becky, who works in our marketing uh, department. She's like. Um, Florian's here, and he's really not happy. And I was I like, wasn't oh, the right no. Size. I mean, you guys took me a lot. I was like a medium, you know? Come on. Like, this wasn't even fun. Like, I'm also taking one for the team, but that was just bad. You did take one for the team, and, and we adjusted, right? We, we switched it up, but... I, uh, yeah, it worked out much better, yeah. yeah. You, you, are, you are quite the uh, professional to uh, accommodate us, and, and I just remember that was... I just remember her text saying, I think actually she sent me a text with you maybe giving me uh, the bird. I, I believe is actually what happened. That is probably exactly what it was. Yeah, it was you, I was going to do it anyway, but I think then you probably pity for me or something. Yeah, it was, it was you with it a was. couple of fingers extended for me. And so uh, <laughs> I, I decided I better leave the office and come right over there and try to smooth things out. So I'm glad we got it worked out. And it ended up being a cute piece, right? Yeah, I mean, hey, I'm okay with it, you know. I'm I'm, I'm not ashamed of anything, you know. It's fine, and uh, and I've not asked you to wear any kind of costume since, so you know. Yeah, I, but I'm I, guessing he's gonna come back, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, sorry, brother. I had I <clears throat> I had to give you a laugh, right? It's, it, people need a little laugh right now. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you well, are. I'm gonna, a good I'm sport. sure gonna read the comment. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take another hit, but it's okay. I'm I'm easy for. Everybody, hey, all you viewers show, out you know. there, you be nice. All you viewers, be nice because he. No, uh, but he everybody just team. knows me, and in, in the APA family, you know, it's, it's a thing. Most of you guys know me. I'm, I'm very easygoing, so I know he sometimes was not happy. For some reason, in the video, you know, I'm never like you know laughing or whatever. But in shows, it's it's quite funny. it's quite the opposite. So you are you are a true time. professional, brother. We we appreciate all your your hard work and you putting up with our weird creative I ideas. Steve, you want to say something? I got it. I want to say a lot of things, but I'll give it short. <laughs> I will say this is in retaliation for when you came to the St. Louis area and ran and you put me on that pool table and you made me wear that blonde outfit. I did. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Did you have the Did you have the boobs too, or just the wig? <laughs> you You were You showed zero mercy. You were even well, like. I mean, you know, it's you were part even of the like, show. I know it, this guy. He'll be fine. No, I wasn't gonna do it to the you know the high up executive you know I, I, I know I was I, it was I know, I'm not in trouble so for the record I knew because what had happened is like sometimes when you when you rent a costume it's great and when you buy it you don't know what you're gonna get until you get it and so we actually had intended to do this like to get you a really something nice and it just we it was just sometimes when you order work. something and you get it and it just doesn't show up and then you're out of time and so I actually if you remember. And I, I warned my team about it too when I got. It. I was like, I don't think he's gonna wear this. <laughs> yeah, you, did we, you did we fly you into St. Louis to fine. do that? Did we, we bring did. him to St. Louis to do that, or were you already in St. Louis? I don't remember. I, I think, think he was we flew him in. 
show. I think I might have had a show for uh, for the league back there. Okay, okay. So we pivoted. This is a good example of how you get on set, you start doing something, it doesn't work quite the way you thought, Gotta and you pivot, and, and you and you you know you make uh, what's the saying? You make lemonade out of lemons, right? And so that's what we did there. And again, you're you're a true professional, brother. We we really appreciate it, and we appreciate yeah. you you joining us tonight. I think this was fun. Always have fun. Yeah. Hopefully the uh, the audience loved it. A kind of a, a you know a behind the scenes look at some of these videos that have man. How many views do you have now on on online? I mean. Well, actually, yeah, millions, got, right? I have over a billion views. Over a billion views. That's crazy. Over a billion. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually at, uh, I think it's 994,000 subscribers on YouTube. So closing out on a million, which is going to be the first time anything pool related is, uh, is reached out. So, and I can kind of give you a little, uh, a little thing here right now. I'm planning on some uh, a really big live uh, this probably either next week or the week after whenever we reach that amount. I'm going to try to beat uh, probably Guinness World Record uh, live. And uh, here, I'm going to just say it. I think we're going to try to beat the record of the most trick shot played in 24 hours. Wow. This, and hopefully, you know, you guys can tune in and just see me sweat for 24 hours because, you know, there's only one, uh, one stupid guy like me. So, you know, hope I'll survive this. So, I mean, I've played one before. You know, I played, uh, what was it, 25 hours uh, of uh, artistic billiard before. Unfortunately, it was never uh, validated, but hopefully it was a stream with a lot of people for 24 hours. It should be okay. And uh, yeah, it was going to be sort of a little celebratory thing. So how many, how many world records do you have now? I got a six Guinness world record at this wow. point. Uh, APA yeah. only has got one. We only got one, <laughs> man. You got six. I'm like, yeah, I, I, a little, I wish I could uh, show you the, the back of my thing, but the problem is it's kind of a mess here because I got a, I got all the cameras out. So <laughs> oh, that's, that's all right. We won't, we won't invade your evening any more than we already have but <laughs> we, we do appreciate you joining us florian and just folks if you haven't you know look for florian on facebook give him a like and a follow yeah. look for him on youtube under venom trick shots uh subscribe to his page this is how the man feeds his family so if you like his work you right now make sure you follow him online uh instagram as well florian we appreciate it buddy always good you to see it. you our best to uh to the family there please stay safe for all of our viewers, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We hope to have some more content like this for you over the next uh, days ahead. Again, we don't know how long the social distancing will go on, but we do encourage you guys to practice the social distancing so we can get back to pool sooner. All right, nice everybody do your part. Stay safe. We appreciate you tuning in. And uh, until next time, folks, have a great evening. Adios. See you guys.